What I'm doing here is marking the background. I don't necessarily need to do it, but with a complicated carving like this, um, you want to be sure what's background, what's being taken away, and what is the subject. It's very easy to take wood away that you want to keep. So, be clear about what's the background, and then we need to think about the depth. Now, I don't want it to be very deep. Uh, here, it's quite a shallow relief, and I'm thinking something like this. I've marked it on the side. I think, yeah, that looks about right. And I've put that onto my depth gauge. Now, this depth gauge is one that we've made on the site, and I put a link below this video so you can make one. And this will be our guide to, to here, bits in the middle where we can't see. So we'll get the background looking pretty much the same. It doesn't have to be exactly the same, but it wants to be uh, looking the same. Normally we would start by, and we will start here, just lining in. In other words, we'll take a V-tool around the edge of these forms as best we can. And as I come down, I want to make sure that the good side of the V-tool, the one that's giving a smooth cut, is to the hair, to the, to the subject. The same on this side here. This is coming all the way along here. So I'm just inside the line. Low level grip. Stop in there. Make that a bit deeper. So this is always, I can be a bit loose with this, but I am inside. I'm going to come around here. So I've lined it in and that protects this, this big area. Then I'm going to take my deep gouge, which could be like this, a number 10 or even a number 9, something deep. And I'm going to go across the wood like this and start removing the background. So when I come to the hair itself, when I come to the subject, I'm going to just turn it like this. I'm trying to line those, the bottom of these cuts, just on the sort of depth I want. So I put this on here, and we're pretty much on there, a little bit more. Like here. Now this bit here is very difficult to get in with that tool, so I can switch to a narrower tool. I come in here as best I can. And this is going to be one of the tricky places where we need to work. But for now, I'm just going to go across and take all these bigger pieces out. So I've been around the bigger areas, getting them to the depth. And I'm pretty sure when I look at them, I can sort of see the background underneath going on, which is great. One of the things about this uh, lining in like this is that it protects the edges. Now these are going to be rounded over here, the legs, so I'm not too worried about those, but certainly when you come in, if you come in this way across the grain, you're likely to bruise the edge of this wood. So you've got to be careful, and that's why that extra bit that the V-tool has left is very useful just there, because we want a nice tight line as we go around. So having done that, the next thing to do, just with these areas, before you leave it, is to nibble back some of that excess wood towards that line. So it's this a high angle grip, and you can just come straight down like this, a little twist, and just nibble that back. I'm leaving these bigger sections like that for the moment. It looks a bit of a mess, but that's okay. It's a good mess. And what I'm going to do is turn to these ones that are a bit smaller. Now the problem with those is that I can't really get this V-tool in because it's got a chisel part here in the keel, so it tends to bind in there. So I can't really use the, the um, V-tool, but what I can do is just go straight to uh, a deep gouge. So I've got to be particularly careful now. I'm going to come along. Uh, I'm picking a narrower gouge than the one I've used elsewhere. I'm going to say use that one over here. It's a bit narrower, and I'm just going to work across the grain and I'm going to give that little rocking cut, a little shimmy like this. What's really important is that I don't go across into that edge here. So I might even do a little bit like this in this way. 
At the end of this stage, it should look something like this. We've got the background lowered pretty much to where we want it to be at these different points. We've got the edges taken up to close to where we want those edges to be. We've protected the important elements, not worried too much about these. Looks, as I said, a little bit of a mess, but it's an ordered mess. We know what's happening. So we get it as far as this, and then we can go on to the next stage, uh, setting in the edges. The next stage is to clean up these edges and set in. And I'm going to suggest you take one area like this and then repeat whatever we do on this area on the other two areas. So there are three of each area, of course. So the first step is to find a tool that matches the sort of curve that you want. Now, if you don't have exactly the tool, you can, um, you can certainly um, adapt this tool to the drawing. In other words, the drawing changes to fit the tool. Uh, but as long as you repeat this tool on each of the three areas like this, then you should be okay and the drawing, you know, everything will look equal. So what we do is we, we just push that straight down like this. I've given it a little bit of a, I'll just put that out there, see, so it's straight down to the wall here. Now as you get down, because it's so shallow, you can stab it a little bit into the background, not too much, but that means that when we come to finish the background up to it, this chip should fall out. So I'm going to find this tool here, and I've moved it around, you see I sliced it around a little bit, but I've essentially matched that curve here, and I'll do that on the all three sides. So I'll then swap to another tool, and perhaps this one will match this one here. This curve here. So I'll stab that one in like this. And we're going to come round a little bit here because I don't want anything to break off there. So do that on the same one all the way around, uh, wherever I want to go. Then I might find one that'll fit this edge here. This is quite a slow curve. And it's probably more better sliced, but you can find a tool that fits there like that, straight down, so straight down like this. And then we come into slicing, which means you, you find the tool, you shunt it along, like this, push it down, shunt it along, keep an exact on that line. Don't worry too much about, don't think about the bevel, think about the, or, or the angle, think about this wall coming pretty much vertically. If anything, you're gonna slope it out that way a little bit to get a little bit of light. Very carefully nibble that back, push that in. I've used the same tools as and use the same method as before. Picking out the tools to match. Bring in smaller tools to cut around small places like there. And Probably, here's a tool that'll go around here. Fill in there. Now when it comes to this part here, I think it's a good idea if we score this line that runs around the outside, around the feet. So what I'm going to do is lift this leading edge a little bit and just push it with my thumb here around like that. So that this line joins with that line, goes across that clean edge, joins this line here, and comes that edge. That way we'll have this circle going all the way around. We're now going to turn to clearing up and leveling this background here. We've been able to lower the background like so. One of the problems we have is that this edge here does tend to foul the blade so that it can't make its cut. And this is especially true of smaller parts. We've been able to do it here, but not very well. It's not very clean. This is where a bent gouge comes into its own because you can get in much up closer 
and into smaller areas. Obviously you'd use a narrower tool for here, but you can get into smaller areas. Now the same problem we have is when we want to clear up this area, and it's even, it's even more difficult because I don't want to make a scooping cut so much as a sort of slicing cut. And this edge here, again, or wherever I come from, is fouling the blade. So again, what we need is what's called a short bent or a, a spoon gouge that will actually sit in there and make this, make this cut. So it's the short bent gouges that are going to come into its own in this sort of tight little carving. The grain in this carving is going across in this direction here, like this. Now you might be able to go with the grain and think to so test it a little bit to see what happens. So we're putting the tool down and sliding across and seeing what happens. Are we getting a clean cut that way or do we need to come this way? Going with the grain will always be best and using the largest tool possible, the widest tool possible to begin with is always good. But if you are not sure, you can always go across the grain like this with a slicing cut. So I will start it off like this. So little, little slicey cuts. What I've done is I've made a nice clean area here. And that's going to be my starting point. And then I'm going to extend, extend this to the side. Now I can see here that I'm pulling against the grain if I go in this direction. So I would probably need to come down here on this, on this direction. And what I'm able to do, if you can see, is actually rest the edge of the tool against this wood here and use it as a sort of fence. I've turned the piece of wood around so you can see better. I was getting in the way of the camera. So this, this way gives me the cleaner cut here in this direction. So very carefully moving this around here like this. Pushing it up to the... Let me just show you that movement again. So this, this tool, the, the edge is sitting on that wall and I can actually make it go along the wall like this, scooping it out. And then if it's a little bit not come out, just nick it off. So if I've got a slight stab in there, that's fine. Not too much though. And I'm going to work my way over this bit here. So when I when I think I've finished, I'm going to turn the light and have another look. Checking the depth. Pretty good. Let me just recap what we're looking for at the end of this stage. We've set in a clean outline around our subjects. The wall is vertical, slightly tilting out if you, if you want to, but vertical, definitely no undercutting. The background should be clean, clean as possible, and it should look as if it's passing behind uh, one element through and through and so on. Uh, use your depth gauge uh, to check that, but most importantly, use your eye so that it just looks flat. And if you've made something a little bit deeper, say, just spread it out a little bit. Don't have any uh, strong depressions. So with that, getting it to this stage, uh, we're ready to start working on the hairs themselves. Always, before I start removing wood, I have a look at my carving, my relief carving in this case, and make some decisions. This is a, a low relief. In other words, there's not really much wood to take away. So this is going to be fairly flat. So a lot of this will be on the original surface. So the first thing to think about is where are my high spots? And they would be like the haunches here, probably along the back here and the shoulders, and possibly a bit around the head. So I'm thinking about that. The ears, uh, well, that will work itself out, but there will be some point of it that is high and goes low, high and goes low, and so on. I'd also look at what wood I'm going to take away. And, and what I've done here is I've actually highlighted the back leg 
because that has to go quite a way down and I want to make sure I take away the right leg, uh, the correct leg rather than the, the wrong one. So I'm going to start at the back here. I'm going to lower this and then I'm going to start shaping these legs and I'm going to leave around the edge here a little bit of a, a lip, just a little bit of a lip where the main leg comes up. So looking at this back leg here, of course the first thing I tend to do is line it in. So I'm going to just separate this leg here from the leg in front. So push this back and I probably want to go about halfway down to begin with, probably ending up about a third of the way from the back to what the front is. And I'm also going to line in just inside here. So this is the edge that I've already set in. I'm going to take this back now. Right. So now I'm going to actually lower the leg. In other words, I'm going to remove wood across the grain. Just take this down, take this back to the level I want. And I do this on all three legs at the same time. So I'm lowering the leg. And then when I've got it roughly to the, the depth, meaning that this top bit here is the high spot now on this second level, top, second, and then the background, I can start rounding it over. So I'll just um, take, um, well, I could probably take the same gouache beam with, and just start rounding this edge over like this. Little, little cuts over. So I'm following it down. I'm trying not to stab into the background. So it's going to come along here. Probably easier if I use a pen and dagger grip over and around like this. Now with a curve like that, what you might find is something like um, a back bend, which is this sort of tool. This is a bit big, but you'll see this tool will be able to come around those curves on the inside like this. So this is where a back bent tool comes into its own. Same here. They sort of follow the curve around. But uh, if you don't have one, that's all right. You can just get your tools and, and just a little cut round over. And what will happen is you'll see now, as you come down here, you'll see the junction more clearly. And it might be that you need to clear that up, clean it up a little bit. So rounding over here. around the over there like this. So this back leg almost is entirely separate from the rest of the carving. I've turned the carving around because I need to get at it from this side um, and the camera was, I'd get in the way of the camera, but um, I hope you can see what's going on. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to set this edge in again down to the foot so this is now the edge of this wall comes across down to the foot like this now making this um, foot uh, rather flat and I'm actually emphasizing this angle so I've got quite a change of plane here not there and that's a sort of carving technique that'll catch a bit of light and and show off the leg better so having got this leg, I can now move into the other bits of the hair. So I'll start on this leg and we're going to go round the face here. Now there's a little bit of a tail going in there. I've got to remember that. I'm coming around this rabbit, I keep calling it a rabbit, uh, the hair up here. So I'm now taking that bit out here. So what it means is I can now come up around this leg and round over into the hair here, into that head. A couple of things I want to point out at this stage. This tail here of this rabbit, that's just left chewed up a little bit. So I'm going to deal with that when I deal with the head all the way around. 
I think you can see here that I've got a strong change of plane down here and down there on the legs. And what that is, is it's me, me doing a sort of car little carving stylization thing here to make these more leg-like and the body itself will be a bit rounded. So that's quite a common sort of carving thing is to actually make strong changes in plane. The other thing to notice is that I've got a very strong outline. So I've got a little wall going on down here. So I haven't come right down the background. I've got a strong well, it's, uh, a sort of outline that tells us exactly what's going on. And that's a, a little relief carving technique where you, you make sure everybody can see exactly what's going on, the subject, and then within it, the changes are plainer less. Anyway, so make sure you've got a strong outline. We're not undercutting, we just have a nice strong chunk here. I'm going to work on the ears next and come down into the head. So the first thing I need to do is make sure I understand which ear is the front and which is back. So this ear here, the front of this head, becomes the back of this ear here. So there's wood to come away there. The front of this ear becomes the back of this ear here. So I've decided which bits go down and I'm going to run my V tool here like this. So this now separates off one ear from the next. I'll we'll come along here. And we can come this way on this one. So those are now my three ears. And um, I'm going to take some wood back here. So as I come back here, I'm going behind this ear, but I've got to rise up to be the front of this ear. So I'm the top of this ear here, I'm rising down the back of this ear there. So there's a little twisting hill thing going on here. And then this one here comes over this way. So now I've got the, the planes of the ears decided. What I'm going to do is just give them some shape. So I'm going to round this over, <coughs> round this bit here. Here's a finished tail. The reason I've got a tail in here, uh, among other reasons, is because I don't want a little dead area in there that I have to clear out. Um, so that's a good carving practice, is not to give yourself more work than you need. Anyway, to create the tail here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start coming over the, the top of the head this way, like so. And this tool here, I can pick to match this one over here. So again, consistency. I'm going to swing this round, like so. Then the top of the head, here, I've already rounded over a little bit. So that's rounded this way to match into that, that back leg. I'm going to take a gouge and cut this mess here at an angle like this. I'm going to cut this along there like that. Remove that wood. And you can see that the back edge the tail starting to appear. So it's running right into the ear. Take that corner out. And then coming back to that original tool, if I can find it, is I'm going to come this way and create a sort of little berm of wood there. smaller to tidy that up. So there's the tail coming along here, comes down and, and along the rabbit, uh, along the hair a little bit, so it's coming along here. And then to finish the ends off, what I do is I just take a, uh, a narrow gouge, something like a, 
Oh, what we've got here. If I can find it again. Yep, there it is. So I take a, a narrow gouge like this, something like that, and just clip off the end of the tail. I'm going to clip it off like, like that. I push that corner in, push that corner in there, and then just take out that little bit there. So a little bit of a shadow at the back, and I can tidy that up on here. And that will be effectively I'm going to clean it up a little bit how the tail runs. So that run along there and underneath the ear there. So the other thing we need to do is make sure we've got um, a, a, a neck here. So what I want to do is, first of all, I've got a line for the bottom of the jowls here. So I'm going to put that in there. So a little cut there, which is on my drawing. So I can do that similarly. Then I'm going to round over the neck. So get a little. So this this is high, comes down over here and behind the ear. So there's definitely a, a, a shoulders, neck, head sort of rhythm going on there. And back over here. And then I'm going to round over the muzzle and the, the snout like this. So what I'm left with in the head will be just the eye. And that'll be the last thing we'll put in when we do the details. So I can clean up some of this over here, down into the top here. Not much wood to come off, but just marrying everything together. So this back here, perhaps a bit lower. Marrying that into that here. So round like that. So I'll have to adjust that bit again here a little bit. And then uh, cleaning off the, the pa paper over here, cleaning it up, just leaving that little bit there. So lastly, when I've cleaned all this up, what I'm going to do is I'm going to stab this ear here, this corner like that. That just separates the ears off. And I've done that in the same place for all of them. And I've also stabbed in this line here. So as that's come out, I've, made, I've actually pushed the corner in there and in there. And that just gives a little bit of a, an accent in there. Okay, so I'm going to clean that up, and then we're just left with the with the eyes. Just before I do the eye, let me just say that I've I had a look at the carving, and I thought this cut here looked too much like a smile, so I've softened that all off, and I've made that a much lighter little cut at the bottom of the jowl here. It's quite a medieval-looking hair. I'm not pretending it looks like anything too real. So. The first thing I want to do is put in um, a nostril here, which goes something like this. So there is a, uh, a cut along here. You can see that, like so. In fact, if I use a smaller tool, it might be easier to see. So there's a cut in here at an angle. And I'm going to cut a little wedge out of there like that. And we're going to just round that little bit over. Might need a skew chisel. But that there is the nostril coming in. Now the eye, well there are different ways of doing it. But what I want to do quite simply is make quite a big eye. So I'm just going to make a round, literally take a number nine, stab it in, move it round, stab it in, Move it round. You can see the paper's coming off. Let me pull that off. Oh. Well, it was going on. <laughs> it will stay on. Okay. So I'm pushing that in. What I don't want to do is pop that out. It is coming off. There you go. 
there you can see it clearly. So there's my eye there. And I'm going to create a bit of a shadow. I'm taking a little bit of wood off here. This isn't quite the right tool. I really want something a bit more bent, but I don't have it to hand at the moment. So this one will do. I'm just going to use that corner to just take some of that out over there. So I've got a nice sharp shadow there. And over here. going to create the eyebrow with a sort of gouge across here. So again, a simple cut straight down like this, hard with that corner coming out to nothing. And then let's put a cut in this way. Take this little bit of wood out. Tiny little bit left in that corner. I'll just rip that out with this skew chisel. And then to create a pupil, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to punch into this end. Quite literally just punch this. And I've made this punch um, here. And what you want is a very hard edge. You don't want a soft one that will compress them. So what I want to do is, is actually come right in here. So the right, uh, hair is looking forward. Let's punch that in like that. So that's basically the eye. So I now can just clean up the surface and then that'll be the eye finished. With the eyes, I've I finished all the detail carving. Although if you want to, you could put a couple of nicks in for the toes and you'd do that uh, very much like you did the eyebrow here, this little delta cut. Perhaps you put a couple of toes in there if you want to. I'm, I'm not going to do it now, although I might change mine later. Check everything over, look at the background, change the lighting, make sure this is uh, quite a strong outline. I took these, uh, this tail back a bit because I thought it was a bit confusing. So I've actually made that softer and made this line here stronger, the one that goes around the, the actual hair. So with that, I've cleaned off the paper now. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to wipe it with um, something like a 340 grit paper. That just means doing this over it. And what that does is it just makes it a little more tactile, takes any of these very hard, sharp edges off. So a little bit of a wipe, and then the carving's finished. What I'm going to do, finally, is just do something with the background. I'm going to uh, get a punch and, and stipple this background a little decoratively. First, um, mark. Then I'm going to turn it a little bit so that I, I sort of tessellate these marks. So I try not to be equal. I try not to put anything in a straight line. Line it up like this. So I just move my way around here. I think the stippling looks really great and I'm very pleased with that. So there we are, the three hairs.